Hi, uh, this video will be mostly focused on the blocking strategy uh, as one of the most important uh, basic principles of experimental design. Uh, this video I will um, cover a little bit about the basic principles of experimental design where blocking is one of these and uh, then I will talk about what is blocking, why we use blocking, uh, how to block in two level factorial designs. If we start by looking at the basic uh, principle principles of experimental design. You can find more information about these in the first chapter of the course book. Randomization, blocking and replication. Uh, and randomization is um, a fundamental principle within experimental design. We randomize to distribute the effect of noise factors more evenly and in a random way among the design runs. <clears throat> blocking is a technique to increase the precision in effect estimates, it's a way of cleaning or taking out the effect of known disturbances or noise factors such as different raw materials, uh, different days of experimentation, personnel, etc. Take this out from the effect estimates so that they are not affected. Replication is important to have true replication of experimental design runs. It makes it possible to estimate the noise or the pure error in the experiment and makes it possible to use analysis methods that are not reliant on partly subjective methods such as the normal probability plot of estimated effects. With um, a pure error estimate or true replication we can go directly into the ANOVA and look at the p-values for example uh, which is less subjective. Uh, randomization, if we start about uh, talking about that principle a little bit. Uh, so why is randomization important? <clears throat> well, the impact of disturbances, uh, noise factors are reduced, such as uh, technical noise factors, uh, machine wear, variation in voltages, um, variation in ambient temperature and so on. We can also have organizational noise factors such as the need to change operators and shifts and laboratory staff and so on so on during the experiment. We can also reduce the impact of erroneous factor settings since in, um, in randomized designs we make more frequent uh, changes of the factor settings than in non-randomized designs. So erroneous factor setting is normally affecting fewer um, of the design runs in a randomized design. Randomization, randomization can also be a problem, of course, uh, because not all factors are easy to change, uh, frequently especially. It can also make it somewhat more difficult to keep track of the run order and, and make sure that all the factor settings are um, in the correct way in each run. Uh, random error is also distributed on all effects uh, that we, we need to be aware of that in the uh, randomized run order. Okay, so more about randomization. Um, when and when perhaps not to randomize. Uh, so first, if a randomized, randomized uh, run order may only makes the experiment a little bit more complicated, we should randomize. If it is very difficult or even impossible to randomize, and we honestly believe that the process and the results will not be affected or disturbed uh, by a non-randomized run order, then we can run the experiment without randomization. But this is perhaps quite unusual uh, that we can make such an assumption. If you cannot randomize and you think the process is unstable and the results will be aff affected by a non-randomized run order, then we should of course try to work with stabilizing the process. A compromise that we should consider is, is of course the split plot designs and we will come into this later on in the course. <clears throat> okay, blocking. When should we do blocking? Well. Uh, when it's impossible to run all experimental design runs under homogeneous conditions and when we know the noise factor and it can be controlled we know which design runs will be affected and so on. For example if we have one batch of the raw material that we need for the experiment and that this only covers perhaps 
let's say half of the experimental runs <coughs> then we know that we need to change the raw material in the middle of the experiment and this can be a situation when we want to run the the, the experiment in two blocks for example why do we block <coughs> well if we know beforehand that, that a disturbance will occur we can try to design the experiment in such a way that the disturbance uh, will not affect the effect estimates and uh, and by this we increase the precision in the effect estimates the basic idea of blocking is that we first choose an interaction effect normally a higher order interaction that will be allied or in Swedish överlagrat with the block effect and this interaction or these interactions will be lost to blocks for two level factorial designs this idea means that we can run the experiment in 2 4 8 16 and so on a number of blocks so i will illustrate this uh, idea with a very simple example so we take the 2 to the 2 design a two level factorial design in two factors and we want to run it in two blocks <clears throat> so this idea means that we take the highest order interaction available in this case we only have the a b interaction this is sort of sacrificed to blocks so let's say we choose when when the um, a b interaction has a plus sign in the matrix we choose to to allocate this run to block number one and when we have a minus sign we choose block number two so that's a quite an easy way of, of uh, picking the blocks However, we should note that when we <coughs> calculate the effects A and B, uh, there are equal number of plus and minus signs uh, in front of each block, as you can see here. For the A, we have minus plus, minus plus, so we have minus 1, plus 1, plus 2, and minus 2. Uh, so this sum uh, of the block effect on the effect estimates A and B will become zero. So the A and B uh, effects are not affected by a potential block effect. However, the A-B interaction is completely confounded uh, with the potential block effect. So we cannot separate the block effect from any A-B interaction effect. So that is what we lose in, in this uh, strategy. Uh, here is a, a symbol of, of the <coughs> which design runs we, we uh, allocate to different blocks. The red ones are the block number one, and the green ones are block number two. Okay, so let's take a look at the two to the three design in two blocks. Uh, the same idea, so we, we choose the highest order interaction term available, ABC here. When ABC has a minus sign, we allocate, in this case, run, or run number one in the standard order to block one. When we have a plus sign, this is a block two, and so on. So that's a quite, it's quite easy to, to allocate the blocks when you only have two blocks. Okay, so what about uh, the situation with four blocks for the two to the three design? Well, we need to pick two interaction effects to become confounded by blocks, A, B, and A, C in this case, and we can call these two block generators. We then need to determine the generalized interaction between A, B, and A, C. Uh, we multiply a b and a c together we get a squared b c is equal to i b c is equal to b c so also the b c interaction will be lost to blocks or confounded with blocks uh, the, the division of the design runs between the blocks becomes then when we only have the plus signs plus 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 in this case a b a c b c is plus this is block number four minus minus plus is block number one and, and we can see then when this uh, is repeated minus minus plus here this is block number one as well so the allocation of the the the, uh, the, the runs to different blocks is determined by these combinations of plus and minus signs that are available to us and there are four combinations okay <clears throat> so in summary uh, here you have a table with recommended block generators for two level factorial designs so we have number of factors we have number of blocks we need to use 
how many runs in each block and we have the re recommended block generator and these are not mandatory but these are the recommended ones and we also see the interactions that we lose to blocks or that become confounded with blocks so in this case when we only have one block generator we only have one uh, interaction lost to blocks when we have two block generators we have three interactions lost to blocks and when we have <coughs> three block generators as in the case with eight blocks we lose one two three four five six seven interaction effects to blocks uh, you can see this this table as well in your course book okay so in summary some important things in this video uh, which are the basic principles of experimental design well these are randomization uh, blocking and replication uh, we also need to know when and why blocking is a useful strategy and we also need to to know how to create blocks in two level factorial designs and with that i thank you so much for listening uh, and good luck with creating your blocked uh, two level factorial designs thank you for listening bye bye